What's good, YouTube? And welcome to the house. A couple of orders of business before we get into today's Market Watch. First off, if you're in the Patreon, I will be mailing your cards after National so you still have time to pick your zones. Ultimate Classic Waifu or Random, that's for the $20 and up tiers. Second off, if you see me at Nationals, don't be shy, don't be scared to say hi. I'm just another person. I will be running between Nationals and Godzilla Fest. So I I also gotta say I'm just not feeling the meta as much a lot of you guys have been asking why I haven't been uploading as much a couple more people you know poking making sure I'm okay that kind of stuff I really do appreciate that but the thing and matter of it is I'm not feeling the format the passing of Kazuki Takahashi has me feeling some type of way and then to top it off, I'm getting ready to pack for travel, and I'm feeling that kind of burnout where certain buyouts just aren't as interesting. When I'm covering the fourth double-down buyout of something in preparation for Splite, I'm just you know, I'm not feeling it as much. I'd rather wait for Splite to be there and see how the buyouts actually develop. But we are covering the market here, right? So I'm not supposed to have that personal attachment. I'm just supposed to say my thought and move on. But I am getting to the point where I'd rather have a little more fun with it. I'd rather go towards, hey, look over here. These things are moving early, like for the first time, and they're more interesting. And there's a lot of triple, double, quadruple, whatever you want to call it, buyouts that are going down. So the first thing I'd like to cover today actually is the Alba Strike Structure Deck, which is still sitting around 13. It's been here for some time. But over on the Big Bad Toy Store, which does have that $4 shipping, if you're picking up several of them, you can save a little and maybe go support another YouTuber in the community. Use their affiliate link. I really do like Jobby and his content, but it, you save a little bit versus the, you know, the 36, 39 you would be spending anyways. And there's a lot of good cards. And the second reason I'd be picking these up, either sealed to keep sealed or just have access yourself, is we did see that future Albaz, you know, dragons removing stuff from opponent's graveyard, the best typings in the game deck that is getting printed in the future. I believe that's in Darkwing Blast. So you do see the continuation of the line, and it's probably something you just want to have access to, especially with all these amazing staples inside. The second thing is that Dark has been moving up, which is no surprise. We've already covered this. All of the Charmers have been going up, and he's the only one without the Booba, no waifu tax. But during Splite format, the Discord was talking about how they do speculate that this is probably the Charmer that would see the most play. That's still speculation, but Dark and Light are the best two attributes in the game versus just having status symbol collectibles. And if this is getting played and moved around, there's two futures there. First off, it could get get grabbed extra and you could see buyouts on it but that also means when meta players who just want to flex that aren't collectors are kind of done with it for a while they end up selling it so sometimes you see cards that were also high end that were played in the meta actually have a bit of a crash later do be aware of these kinds of trends while i'm not a financial advisor channel each and every card is different and i don't know the future of how a card is specifically going to go you can sometimes catch on that you have those spikes and when it's involved with the meta it has a later crash than it being truly good for it long term because those players will end up selling them once again some food for thought there. Then we have the Zombie Vampire, and this card is slowly coming back down, but it's very generic. Battle of Chaos is not in this year's Megatons, at least unless there's some huge curveball surprise. They'll likely be putting it towards the next year's Megatons or earlier reprints. And Zombie Vampire is very generic, and a card that I like a lot that did see some metagame play here recently, and that's why you saw the spike. It was chilling around 7, 8 forever, lowest point six and then it spiked on up. It's come back down, and I think during this very many off-season, because we're going to get regionals, like, pick up immediately in early August, well, I think it would be good just to have access to something generic like this. Kind of reminds me of how Dengirsu got used for a long time, and it actually has come back up in price for itself, too. Illegal Knight is all the way down to $3, while the Adventure Token Engine goes down in price from people being scared it will be 
hit. These two things, like, go together, right? If the Adventure Tokens engine's gonna be hit, Illegal Knights, how it probably will continue in the future. I really like this as Penny Stonks. It's gone way down further than I could have possibly seen, and you might want to pick it up sooner than later using that TCG player link in the description down below, costing you nothing extra to support the channel directly for the cards you'd already be buying. But on the flip side of the coin... Konami could want to cash back in fully on the Adventure Token engine, meaning they barely slap it on the wrist, maybe put some things at two, reprint it, and then further hit it down the road, meaning Illegal Knight could be stuck at its price point for a very long time, all the way until they're, they're still printing even further stuff for the Adventure Pack en engine now, if you've been keeping up with OCG news. Yeah, so it, it's in a weird place too, but I really do feel like it is undervalued at three. On that note, Deer Note and the Punk Engine, I don't really see it getting hit, but maybe it does? I really like the Punk Engine, and I think it's getting underestimated here in multiple ways. This started out higher, it was selling really consistently around 8 to 10, and now you see it all the way down, starting to be sold under $5, but a lot of them at 5 I really think that people are oversleeping on this and that as the set ages, we go to future sets and there's less quantities of these, Deer Note and the Punk Engine will probably still be performing. A lot of people are looking through the ends of just lens of just the OCG format and not by our ban list or over speculating on how our ban list will be. And I really like this card a ton. Dimension Shifter is down to 30 listings. Probably not what a lot of people want to hear that people are buying and using and sales rates are insane on this card. Hopefully there's a reprint around the corner for this. But yeah, if you're in the market for this card, you're going to be a flunder list in the future. You're thinking about how hard it counters so many different decks. You might want to actually get step on the gas towards getting this uh, hopefully it gets reprinted you know with nibiru and this year's mega tens or something but yeah it is 11 to 12 dollars it is continuing to just slowly go up i remember it being eight and then nine somebody bought six at 20 yikes a lot of people end up spending on that top lister when they're not competitive boy is it ugly bujinki ashram this is one of those ones that i'm talking about right like we've already covered this recently too zodiac's freaking out about it today it's in the discord people are going oh my gosh have you seen this one and we covered it when it did bump up towards eight ten dollars now it's twelve dollars more people getting it to splite this is the kind of things that i'm bringing that are like yep it's up again it's getting noticed again though that's the kind of repetitive content that is starting to wear on me a little right but i'm still going to end up bringing it on market watch beautiful princess now this is no stranger to market watch but it has been a while the fish dot good stuff has been getting noticed a ton more and you see the spiking on and back up especially first edition as she has no reprints i love seeing decks doing better than expected being the reason that something in the past goes up but then it becomes less accessible so it's this kind of box where it's like yay ah you know that, those kind of feelings let's talk about two failed products that probably shouldn't have failed this year the speed duel gx academy box they even incorporated sealed at locals yet the secret rares were just such bad pick so many of these already had secret rare printings like cyber dragon already has a 10 secret poly already had their secret i think out of the legendary collection book of moon also out of the legendary collection had a secret nice on the kochi even though you just hollowed it up this year dasher then got you know the reprint here but also super in an ots pack got a cosmic cyclone i almost called it galaxy was printed secret don's luke's gonna have a competing large dd warrior lady nice except people can't even be bothered to buy the first editions this Dark Crisis, one of the most expensive sets sealed. $15 for a near mint first edition. Some people don't even play it in GOAT format. I think this is a steal, but I thought it was a steal at 20 and look how that went. Market Man, not always right, you know, as people went for collectibles left behind but yeah just not the best secret rares a lot of them already had like 10 secrets or some version of a secret and uh they they missed the mark on what made the first one special by that upgrade pack of wow 
a lot of these were already very expensive for their secrets or never had something like that before and they double dipped way too fast on stuff like dasher then ghost from the trash to what really hurts this one is the quality control on top of it being over ordered so everybody has it and then everybody knows the back of these cards are going to have tire tracks on them that near mints are going to be so hard to come by among the issues that already have ghost and the set inside just deflated in value so fast yes there's a lot of penny stonks that's the game i'd be playing with it at this point like borlin way too cheap in my opinion but look at how many listings of a lot of these 200 300 over 100 on hope harbinger like so many people have just mountains of these cards versus the ghost 68 62 70 listings people not wanting to list this cheap which means there's also you know a price ceiling that's waiting so you're in the room right to explain this and you're looking around and you've got yours and you're like well i'm i'm gonna hold it and there's people up in the attic that are waiting to hold theirs too that you didn't really consider right so you're like ah the ceiling's up oh wait there's people right there and they're gonna list theirs the moment it hits a certain price so there's people waiting to list if there is some kind of buyout hoping to get sales rates over there and this isn't the really reflective of how many people have the ghost and aren't just forever holding stonking waiting a decade there's a lot of people that are waiting just for that initial buyout and here you see i to Myus under 30 they're starting to run this gimmick back into the ground too and that's listed as near mint and the other thing is people want to see these in person they don't want to you know knowing that it can be damaged out the box pulled trust even top rated sellers that have them at 30 if they're waiting for these cards which funny enough we did point out secret to rare of that you know <laughs> i have to my secret I unless something's changed is actually cheaper let's actually go there i love doing stuff like oh, live editing done cheap i have to my secret to rare. this is market price 25 first edition low there is one at 20 now so people are selling this even cheaper thanks to the ghost so it did push it down originally the secret was going for uh, and some sales you can see where there haven't been many sales since uh you know ghost too much you can see though they were they were in the 30 range before the ghost existed so it has pushed it down a little having that collectible over it but people almost seem to prefer it other random buyouts in the ultimate sector these are ones that can get old to me right because like oh this ulti got out well it's an ulti dr4 gets bought out well it's from dr4 retro pack got out well it's from retro pack you know the easiest of reasonings that happen time and time again but sometimes the cards are interesting like both trishula and mystical space typhoon are pushing past market price but when we go and look and highlight wow no sales in almost a month on trishula despite that upped price it's just that there's not that many people to relist and push it down the mystical space typhoon littered with italian copies all right here all from the same seller this shouldn't really be allowed come on like just make it one listing please thank you uh then it's like 200 one english copy before it's freaking 300 and you do even see a sale at 200 here as it's pushing up already above its market price for past formats this is more interesting to me to kind of highlight well this is in just so many formats time wizard is kind of hyper inflating certain collectibles that were played as we see a re-reach into our collector market versus ones like trishula more slimmed down the formats due to ban lists and that kind of stuff yet still hailed and then it also has a starlight rare it also has the dual terminal version right like this gets a little more interesting to me at least other than oh it's just ulti and looking at how it is going speaking of just ulti i can't really imagine too many other reasons but let me know in the comment section down below if you know another reason spell shattering arrow ultimate rare has been bought out it looks very nice but uh yeah not the most sales rate since the buyout of 20 dollars here at 40 it doesn't hit traps uh, destroy as many face-up spell cards your opponent controls as possible so anti mystic mind tech 
question mark let me know in the comment section down below if you know a reason besides that maybe that it's getting bought out thanks for watching today's market watch please subscribe if you haven't already give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed the conversation i will see you at nationals and that should be fun i think that's going to be a bit of the break that i needed in terms of i'm not going to be focusing on videos i'm going to leave it to the new generation to do deck profiles where you see 20 people piled up i'm going to enjoy godzilla fest too so i won't be in the building the whole time but uh if you have won a stream prize hit me up i'll probably meet people up after you know at your convenience at event or maybe try to find you based off of like your tournament rounds or something if i'm doing a quick run and thanks for watching though everybody